Hello, everyone, and welcome to Berkeley. Thank you so much for coming to join us this afternoon. We're really excited to give you a wonderful introduction to our campus and tell you all about the things it has to offer. So my name is Violet, and I'm going to be your moderator for this tour. I use the she pronoun series, and I actually grew up in Berkeley, California. And I'm a third year at Berkeley now studying physical geography, so I really did not go very far away for my university experience. Some of the things I do on campus are dancing with Cal Ballroom, our Latin and Ballroom dancing team, undergraduate research in our geography department. I'm also a member of the Berkeley Student Cooperative, the housing system here on campus. And I am part of Cal Hiking and Outdoor Society, which is an outdoor organization. So something we totally wanna to kick off our tour with is that we are super excited to have just very recently won, not one, but two Nobel Prizes for UC Berkeley faculty. These include one for Jennifer Doudna, who was absolutely foundational in developing CRISPR-Cas9 technologies for gene editing, who won a Nobel Prize in chemistry, and Reinhard Genzel, who recently won the Nobel Prize in physics, along with a professor from UCLA, another school in the UC system. So today's presentation is very much specific to the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley and our engineering program. If you're interested in a non-engineering tour, we also offer those. You can find them on our website, visit.berkeley.edu. However, today we are going to focus on the College of Engineering explicitly. There'll be about a 40 to 45 minute presentation. There's gonna be a whole bunch of polls coming up. So we hope that you'll interact with us, let us know who you are, where you're coming from, so that we can best tailor the tour to you all. The tour will be recorded, so you can find it on YouTube or on our website at a later date. In addition, we do have lots and lots of really talented, knowledgeable ambassadors on our back end who will be answering any questions you might have during the tour. So please, 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 please put any and all questions you have in the Q&A function below so that we can get back to you and answer any questions that our tour guides don't get to. Of course, this tour is going to be a little bit different than a regular tour because we are focusing on engineering. Uh, so please, again, refer to the website for general tour information. It will be a student perspective on Berkeley's campus and on our College of Engineering. We are not the Office of Admissions, nor are we the Office of Financial Aid. We'll do our very best to answer any questions you might have. But of course, for official answers, you need to go to those departments directly. The last 10 to 15 minutes of our tour will be a live question and answer section. So again, please do put any questions you have down in the Q&A below so that we can answer them throughout and at the end of the tour. So without further ado, I will hand it over to our two tour guides for today. Hello and welcome to UC Berkeley. My name is Abby. I go by the pronouns she, her, hers. And I come from Tustin, California, which is in SoCal, 20 minutes outside of Disneyland. Um, I'm a sophomore here at Berkeley, and I'm currently majoring in the College of Letters and Science for Psychology and Nutritional Sciences in the Rouser College of Natural Resources, which we'll explain a bit more later in our um, undergraduate college section. And then in terms of involvement on campus, I'm really involved in Berkeley Hillel, which is a Jewish student organization on campus as well as um, involvement in a club slash class called MedLife, which is about global and local health inequalities. And then I'm also involved in Greek life on campus. Hi everyone, I'm Nina. I use the she, her, hers pronouns. I'm originally from Ghent, Belgium, and I'm a sophomore here at UC Berkeley. Um, my major, my intended majors are both economics and statistics. Um, while also being a super awesome campus ambassador, I'm also part of a consulting group known as Voyager Consulting. Um, I'm also an intern for Izzy and Riley Co. and for Moho Chocolate Company, um, and I'm also involved in Greek life. Although both of us are not in the College of Engineering, I just want to say that we're both, we've been trained to give these stories and are super excited to be talking to you guys today. Yes. So without further ado, I'd love to like welcome you to Berkeley in general. We're asking you right now on a poll, who are you? Um, where are you coming from in terms of your application cycle? It looks like we have a senior here joining us, two seniors. So welcome. Thank you for being here. And yeah, as Nina mentioned, yes, we are not part of the College of Engineering, but we've done a lot of training and talked with a lot of students. Um, 
in terms of finding out different anecdotes and different things about the College of Engineering. Um, so a little welcome to Berkeley. Here you'll see a GIF on the top left of our kind of aerial view of campus, which is beautiful Campanile right there, you'll see in the center. Um, to the bottom left, you'll see Hearst Memorial Mining Building, which is one of the major um, engineering buildings on campus and it's beautiful lights and architecture. And then we're also celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley this year. Um, two years after this school actually started, women were accepted to Berkeley. So that's something we're really proud of. Um, one thing I wanted to focus on and tell you about was the engineering side of campus and the engineering buildings. I'm actually on campus currently um, doing my classes virtually, but living like two minutes away from campus. And one thing I've had a really cool time doing is exploring campus, exploring all the outdoor, outdoor seating that's available to uh, students for learning and for using right now. And I have to say the engineering area has been my absolute favorite. There was really no reason for me to go before, but now I find myself going there at least a couple times a week. Um, so that's something to look forward to, even if this is a weird year. Um, and even if that continues next year, that's something to keep in mind is that these engineering um, areas are both beautiful from the inside and from the outside, which I really love plugging because the, our campus is beautiful in so many ways. Um, and without further ado, we'll get on to a little bit of an agenda of today and what we're going to discuss. So obviously we have our overview of Berkeley and Nina will go into the history of our school. And then we're going into academic overview, specifically, obviously, engineering information with the College of Engineering um, and then student life what it would look like to be an engineering student on our campus, as well as resources for those students, labs and maker spaces that engineering students really um, hang around in, and then research on campus and the legacy of our alumni. Yeah, so let's start us off with a little short um, introduction to the history of our institution. <clears throat> so we were founded in 1868, um, we are commonly referred to as Cal Berkeley University of California, all means the same thing. Um, we were the first of nine undergraduate UC schools, which is why we get to call ourselves University of California. Our mascot is the Golden Bears. Fun story, back in the day they used to release live uh, bear cubs onto the field during um, halftime. However, obviously as they grew up, that posed quite a bit of a problem. So our mascot, Oski, was born. Um, he's a wonderful bear. You will probably see pictures of him throughout this tour and we'll point him out. A little bit more about our campus size. So there's about 33 or 34,000 undergraduate students and 4,000 of those are engineers. And we, are, we have approximately 12,000 graduate students where about 2,300 of them are engineers. Okay, so a little bit of an academic overview of our five undergraduate colleges. Obviously, we are going to be focusing primarily on the College of Engineering, which includes 11 majors, which we'll go into um, detail with in every single slide. And then we have the College of Chemistry being discussed today because the um, Department of Chemical Engineering is actually housed in the College of Chemistry, but we'll get into that and how um, a lot of classes overlap and how you are then also um, involved in the engineering department. And then we'll also discuss a little bit about the College of Letters and Science today, just because there is a computer science major within this college. Um, and we'll discuss the comparison of the computer science major in the College of Letters and Science and um, electrical engineering and computer science in engineering. And then we also have our Rouser College of Natural Resources and College of Environmental Design, which you can definitely hear more about in our general um, tours that you can find on our website. And one thing I just wanted to note before we get started is the idea of applying directly versus transferring. Um, the College of Engineering and the College of Chemistry are our two most impacted colleges and are pretty competitive to get into. Um, and they're very important to apply directly into. Some people might think game the system, try to figure things out, um, apply somewhere else. But it's really, really important that if you find that that's what you wanna do, apply there directly. It's really hard to transfer in after. Um, I know it might be possible, but it's near impossible. So just something to keep in mind is applying directly um, if that's an interest of yours. Yeah, I completely agree. If engineering is what you want to be doing, you should directly be applying to the College of Engineering. Honestly, an amazing college. 
Um, so I want to give a little bit more of an overview of our campus culture and also the culture in the College of Engineering. So I want to start us off with the statement of or kind of the motto of the College of Engineering. It is to transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators of positive change and expand knowledge and create transformative technology through original research to tackle the world's biggest challenges. The University of California and also just the College of Engineering is often referred to as kind of a campus of change makers. This mainly comes from our involvement in the free speech movement. The free speech movement was a pivotal moment in UC Berkeley's history. Prior to the 1960s, many students weren't allowed to advocate for their political beliefs or engage in political activity on campus. Um, however, after a series of um, rallies and sit-ins led by Mario Savio and a group of students, the university finally announced that we were able to do all of those things. And nowadays, this legacy has still remained. Uh, we are, you will see numerous student groups on campus kind of fly, flying on Sproul Plaza, which is kind of our hub for all um, clubs and activity and social activity and all of those things. And you really see them being real change makers and pioneers and leaders in their field. Here at Berkeley, we really push for, we kind of push the boundaries and strive for excellence both um, academically and socially. And we always live by the motto to challenge the status quo. Whether that be through entrepreneurial spirit as a university that's home to one of the best business schools in the world, um, or through our cutting edge uh, technology and research and innovation, we are a compassionate, passionate community that thrives for social change, sustainable change and social justice in the world. I am personally super proud to be a golden bear and honestly, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. We are also very committed to bettering our society and addressing public issues. And we also have the highest rate of students entering the public service industry. Yeah, I have to say that um, the idea of Berkeley as change makers and of positive change making is really, really amazing and tied throughout all of our campus culture, whether that be research, whether that be business. So that's really cool. Um, and you'll see a poll popping up right now. We wanna know what you're interested in, what you're joining us today for. And it looks like one out of one, electrical engineering and computer sciences. So 100% EECS, um, which is what it's commonly com referred to as, and will probably continue being referred to as. But um, we're happy to have you here and thank you for filling that out. We'll obviously go into all the majors, but it's great to know um, that EECS, it is 42% of our student population in the engineering college. So it makes sense. Um, welcome. So we have those 11 majors. Oh, and civil and environmental engineering. So that's really cool. Um, we have our 11 majors all ranked in the top nine globally. Um, you'll see to the right, this is kind of the distribution that we're looking at. So EECS, as I mentioned, is quite um, heavily emphasized because there's a lot of interest in that, but we also have a huge population of mechanical engineering as well as bioengineering. And then CEE is the civil um, and electrical engineering or sorry, uh, civil engineering. And so that's um, also like 9% of the student population, but it's really cool because I think a lot of classes overlap, a lot of, um, of the under uh, classmen classes overlap. So no matter what department you're in, you can definitely have that collaborative nature. And there are different opportunities for joint majors or minors, which we'll get into later. So a lot of kind of um, interdisciplinary focus of all these colleges or all these departments. But in terms of switching majors, this is possible. So something to keep in mind. Yes, it is easier um, to start on a path and finish on that path. But we understand that it can be hard to decide or you might find something that changes your mind. So just something to keep in mind, it is possible to switch between majors. Um, I highly, highly encourage no matter what to get involved with your four year academic advisor through the College of Engineering. That's your best way of making a path or sticking to it or switching. As soon as you get a relationship with those advisors, they know um, what you want to do almost more than you do sometimes because they know the system. I know for me, having two different majors in two different colleges, advising is a key part of scheduling. Um, so something to keep in mind. And then also just in terms of our postgraduate paths, a lot of people will go into the industry directly. We're located in an amazing area of the Silicon Valley. So 
Um, if you're looking for postgraduate work, as many people are, a lot of those companies are looking for UC Berkeley students in this area. So whether that be actually postgraduate or internships during your years at Berkeley, that's definitely a thing a lot of students participate in. And then there's also graduate school opportunities in the future, as well as research, which you can get involved in starting in your undergraduate years leading to your graduate um, or postgrad years. Yeah, so now let's dive into the College of Engineering and all the majors it offers. So ideally, after you've explored all the options that the College of Engineering has to offer, you will have found a major that has your name written all over it. Um, however, here at Cal, we understand that sometimes you just aren't sure what you want to be doing and you don't really know what you want to actually be doing, but you just know that engineering is something that you're interested in. That's why Cal offers a undeclared engineering program. Um, so basically, you would come in as an undeclared engineer and you will have up to your fourth semester here at UC Berkeley to declare. You will also have to take a class um, in your first semester, which kind of tackles all the different engineering fields so that you can kind of get acquainted to all the different engineering fields that are available at Berkeley. Um, however, I will say, although this major sounds awesome for people who just aren't really sure what to do, it is quite a competitive admissions process. Um, and so if you, I would suggest that if you have a rough idea of some type of engineering that you're interested in to apply directly into that instead of applying into the undeclared major. However, if you truly are undeclared, there's no other place than Berkeley to be doing engineering. Now let me dive into nuclear engineering. So nuclear engineers kind of lead research and development processes using nuclear energy and radiation to produce things like electricity, they power spacecrafts, they also just do super cool things in medicine. Um, so if you wanna help solve really big issues facing for like today's world, such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions, using nuclear energy, um, or you just wanna develop some medical imaging technology or look at ways to uh, improve diagnosing and combating chronic diseases. I think that nuclear engineering honestly is the major perfectly for you. Um, a little bit more about bioengineering, another really popular major here at UC Berkeley. Um, so this is more for people, basically bioengineering looks at the intersection between technology and medicine. Um, so basically if you want to look into things like CRISPR and DNA um, and nanotechnology and a lot of medical devices and tissue engineering, this major offers uh, students a unique perspective into the engineering world. I know a few people in this major and they're some of the most passionate people ever. My roommate actually um, will nerd out a lot about this major and how much she loves being in this um, major and literally I've seen she can talk hours about CRISPR and generally she's always excited about all her classes that are bioengineering related. Yeah, I have to say that all the people I've talked to in the College of Engineering, because these majors house um, fewer students, it's an amazing community um, where everyone is super, super passionate and just really, really proud. Um, it leads me to Industrial Engineering and Operations Research, or IOR. I actually, um, through training for this tour, I started talking to a lot of people I knew in the College of Engineering, and I think I misled someone and they thought that I was starting to be interested in um, doing IEOR myself, which um, that was a mistake, but it was really, really cool because she was so, so excited to tell me all about it. Um, so excited to have me a, as a part of that community um, that didn't ultimately happen, but it just goes to show how um, passionate people are for their major and their colleges. And it's really, really cool to see when people um, find their passion and are able to like live that out, especially here in such an amazing place with so many resources and maker spaces. Um, so IOR a little bit into that um, because I didn't know coming in what that would be or what that looks like, but this is complex systems operation and making processes more effective, efficient, and safe. So what I think of as like Disneyland in terms of lines and efficiency kind of optimization for that the best way to like make the most money but also to make sure that things aren't overcrowded and all of that so critical thinking in that way is kind of um the level of thinking that you would be doing for ior and then material sciences and engineering is desirable materials material properties so 
function, environmental impact, feasibility, and cost. A lot of this looks like packaging or different manufacturing things, um, but also in that optimization lens. And so you'll see to the right, um, we have that science fair every year housed at UC Berkeley, a lot of uh, competition, but also co collaboration. And then you'll see to the lab, um, just again, like it's a playground for all these College of Engineering students, and they love to use all the different maker spaces and research laboratories that we have on campus. Yeah, I have to say, on a CDIOR major, it sounds so interesting. I've been looking into ways how I could fit it into my schedule as a minor, um, and I'm really excited. Hopefully, it'll work out, but I think double aging in a minor might be a lot. But <laughs> let's move on to the civil and environmental engineering major. So civil, civil engineering is kind of the intersection between data, structures, and natural environments, and this includes sustainability, infrastructure, and control systems. So civil engineers are basically in charge of designing, planning, building, and managing physical structures such as buildings, bridges, dams, and roadways, you name it. Um, civil engineers also kind of look at, they also, um, I mean, specifically the one at Berkeley really wants to emphasize sustainability. And so a lot of our civil engineers also look at providing solutions for safer air quality, um, drinking water, how can we manage our waste better, and how can we clean up contaminated areas, or how can we remove hazardous waste from our um, ecosystems. Next, the mechanical engineering major is also very common here at UC Berkeley. So mechanical engineers basically apply a lot of um, science and math to create practical and useful situations um, that we can, a solution, sorry, that we can use in our, in the world, I guess. So they work on uh, multidisciplinary projects, looking at both materials and machine designs and how they apply or apply to real life solutions. So for example, they test materials to ensure that they'll withstand design requirements. Um, they also invent really, really cool devices, such as like aid disabilities and kind of a lot of cell phone things and stuff like that. Um, and also other numerous things such as um, they look at the application of thermodynamics, I'm sorry. Um, they also do energy robotics and automated manufacturing and computer mechanics. Honestly, mechanical engineering is a very broad major that I think encompasses a lot of different engineering fields into one. So going off of what Nina mentioned about sustainability and just kind of um, ingraining that idea of Berkeley's sustainability into a lot of things. I think engineering science is a really, really cool major. Um, when I first heard about it, I think this is the one that I would pick if I was in the College of Engineering, just because it kind of takes the mindset and the lens of an engineering education, but applies it in so many different ways and so many different focuses. So if you're into science, um, whether that be in the sciences in general, math, biology, physics, um, and you're interested in engineering, this is a great intersectionality um, of those two. So we have energy and engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics, and environmental engineering science. So a lot of this is just applying um, green technology, sustainability, and all that in an engineering lens to these different uh, fields. So it's really, really cool and is a great um, thing to go hand in hand with a lot of other uh, research and innovation happening on campus. And then to the right, you'll see our main engineering building, which houses a lot of the engineering offices, such as your academic advising. And then you'll also see Kresge Engineering Library, which is an amazing library, a lot about collaboration, which I know can be a concern for some people, whether there's a super competitive cutthroat environment or a collaborative environment. And what I found in this engineering um, world is that everyone is really working together. I know there are some intro classes that can be quite difficult, um, but the system here is that a lot of older um, students help younger students. There's the Student Learning Center, which we'll get into later, but just to keep in mind that our libraries, like everywhere on campus, are collaborative in nature and are really pushing to help you in everything they can do. Yeah, I completely agree. I would say that Berkeley honestly has a very collaborative environment. I've never had anybody reject me if I asked them for help. Um, I think that a lot of people have actually reached out to me to say like, do you need any help? Um, which I think is awesome about the Berkeley campus. But finally, let's talk about the electrical engineering and computer science major, our most common major here on, or most, com most commonly taken major 
here at UC Berkeley in the College of Engineering. Um, I'll refer to it from now on as EECS, as Electrical Engineering and Computer Science is quite a, mouth, a mouthful. So basically, um, I'm going to split this into two. So first off, what do electrical engineers do? So electrical engineers kind of focus more on products and generate or trans, like products that generate or transmit electricity or that use electricity as a power source. So they might design thing, they might design and assemble or test new devices um, anywhere from like semiconductors to aerospace industries. Um, while computer scientists kind of use uh, use technology to solve problems. And so they might write the software to achieve new things or do things in a faster manner. And so by combining these two disciplines into one, you get the major EECS, which basically tackles technological problems through high levels of collaboration. So as one of my fellow campus ambassadors always says, um, this major is basically where you train computers to do your bidding. Um, but now let's dive a little bit more into what is the difference actually between EECS and computer science. So <clears throat> the main thing is that the EECS major is a Bachelor of Science offered through the College of Engineering, which means that you have to di apply directly into the major. Um, the EECS major focuses both on hardware and software integration. So as I said, you will not only make the device, but you will also program the device to do the things that you want it to be doing. Um, you also will have your four breadth course requirements, which comes with the college event, which is kind of a general um, requirement for the college in the College of Engineering. And you will also have to take an ethics and specific math and physics requirements. Meanwhile, the computer science major is offered through the College of Letters and Sciences. Um, it is a Bachelor of Arts and you're um, accepted into the College of Letters and Sciences as undeclared. This means that you have to, you can declare, I guess, your major um, typically by your fourth semester here at UC Berkeley after taking a few prerequisite classes. Um, so this, the computer science major is very heavily software focused, um, but it is very flexible. I know a lot of students who typically combine the computer science major with, for example, economics or with business or with data science or with psychology. Um, I think that's what the beauty is about the computer science major is it is adaptable to so many different majors as well um, and a perfect double major in my opinion. You will have to take the seven breadth courses that come with the College of Letters and Sciences. This is a requirement that all uh, students in the College of Letters and Sciences have to take. Um, and this major is impacted. That means that you do need to take, have a 3.3 GPA in core classes, which are CS61A, CS61B, and CS70. Um, so I would definitely check that out and see kind of which one is more interest or you're more interested in. Yeah, so um, as Nina mentioned, there are like double majors and that's a really big thing, especially in the College of Letters and Science, when you don't declare into the second semester of your sophomore year, it gives you a lot of flexibility in making those decisions. Um, but if you are set on the College of Engineering, we have different options for you. Um, you'll also see a poll popping up right now asking where you're joining us from. So welcome, I see some Southern California, some Eastern time zone. So thank you again for being here. Also something to note is if you have any questions about any of the material we're covering, please feel free to use the Q&A. We have a lot of campus ambassadors on the back end who are really excited to answer your questions. Um, but just continuing on with our joint majors. So this is unique to the College of Engineering because these are such um, dense majors and there's a lot of information to cover in each of these departments. We don't offer necessarily double majors between um, departments in the College of Engineering, but there are joint majors that are designed um, to work together to have a little bit of each. Um, so it is a program already designed for um, interdisciplinary of maybe two majors that work together well. So I definitely highly encourage you to um, look into joint majors further, look into see if maybe that's something that would interest you and what's set up already. Um, but in terms of double majors inside the College of Engineering, that's where you're looking towards, but you can always, um, I guess, add on a major outside of the College of Engineering, should you be so ambitious. Um, but in terms of minors, these are actually open to all students, no matter if you're in the College of Engineering or not. Um, so there are minors offered through all departments and you can definitely check those out. Um, I've definitely heard of different people taking minors that um, are in the College of Engineering who aren't College of Engineering students. And that's a really cool way to access the amazing resources we have at such an amazing university. Um, but another way to get into that 
world without really committing to a minor or all these classes are certificates, which were really, really cool things that I heard about um, that are offered. There are certain subjects such as design innovation and entrepreneurship and technology. And these certificates provide you um, with an increased knowledge on certain areas through really cool programs through the College of Engineering. So for example, the design innovation certificate is offered through Jacobs Hall, which is our kind of design um, and maker space. And so this allows you to learn a lot of different things such as 3D printing, but also learning how to um, design your own um, engineering tools and all that kind of stuff. And then there's also entrepreneurship and technology certificate, which is really cool because there's a lot of emphasis you'll see in different ways um, of entrepreneurship and engineering. This is a huge and up and coming field as you're probably aware. And so this leads me into management entrepreneurship and technology or the MET program, which was established in 2017, which really emphasizes the intersectionality between um, engineering and by our business. So we have the Haas School of Business on campus. I'm sure you have heard of that. Um, and this allows you to apply into the MET program before you come to Berkeley. So it's on that application um, and you'll check MET and there's a supplemental essay. And you would then, if you get into this program, which is pretty competitive, um, you would be on track for whatever engineering major you declared. And then also for a um, business administration degree from the Haas School of Business. Um, so that's a really cool thing to keep in mind. It's something that you can apply to. You'll always be automatically considered for the engineering um, department that you are interested in. But if you're interested in that um, entrepreneurship and engineering lens, then this is definitely something to be uh, looking towards. But we have other things, that certificate, as I mentioned, and the Sudar Chidai Hall um, Center of Entrepreneurship and Engineering. So you have your opportunities, but here are all the things that you might be interested in. And please, please, please feel free to use the Q&A if you have any questions. Now let me dive in dive into actually our last engineering major that we're going to talk about today, which is home, which is in the College of Chemistry. So the College of Chemistry is home to about a thousand students. You also have to apply directly into the College of Engineering, much like the College of Engineer of uh, the College of Chemistry. You have to apply indirectly, much like the College of Engineering. Um, it is ranked number one globally, so definitely the place to be. Um, it offers three majors: Chemistry, Chemical Biology, and Chemical Engineering. So a little bit more about what Chemical Engineering actually is. So chemical engineering is kind of a branch of engineering that deals with chemical production and the manufacturing of goods. Um, it includes designing and how can we make processes more efficient. So for example, which catalyst is more efficient or more appropriate depending on the process and kind of also looking at how can we process um, and like looking at different ways to process and refine raw materials and looking at mixing and compounding. Um, basically, it prepares you for a lot of different industries. So students will typically go into industries such as chem, like the chemical industry, petroleum, electrochemical, biochemical, aerospace, plastics, food processing, so many different things you can do with your chemical engineering major. Um, a little bit more about the College of Engineering. Uh, we act 16 elements were actually discovered in the College of Engineering. Um, oh, chemistry, sorry. Um, <laughs> and the three most common ones that you'll probably know are Berkelium, Californium, and Seaborgium. Okay, so shifting from our academic lens to student like, oh, that is still Nina. That's funny. Go ahead. Hey, okay, it's all good. But yeah, basically talking a little bit more about student diversity within the College of Engineering. So we have so many numerous programs to help our students feel at home, no matter uh, what their background is, a financial, economic, or social background or cultural background is. So we have uh, clubs like Women in Science Engineering Theme Program, which is a theme program in the dorms. Um, I had one of my friends live actually in that dorm. Um, it's located near Foothill. And basically it's a theme program where you get to live with people who are also female and in an engineering or STEM program. She said she absolutely loved it. Um, she could just go to any of her roommates and basically a lot of them would be in the same classes and they could ask for help on homework and they could just kind of be with similar people that they wanted to interact with. So you would apply to this program through the, uh, when you apply for housing. Uh, we also have the Black Engineering and Science Student Association, also known as BESA. There's also the Hispanic Engineers and Sciences, um, also known as HES, and the EOP STEM and the Pre-Engineering Program. Um, a little bit more about prep. So basically the pre-engineering program 
begins is like a three week begins earlier and is a three week summer program offered for incoming Berkeley engineering freshmen um, and prep kind of also continues throughout the semester and gives you workshops and events and you get to really uh, bond with the cohort that you form um, or that gets accepted into this program um, during the summer or when you're a freshman at um, engineer. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that, Nina. Um, and then now shifting back to academics and structure and class sizes. Um, this is definitely a huge thing to talk about at such a large school. It use, usually is a concern of people um, to see if there is that one on one um, experience with professors and not to worry. There's definitely a structure that makes it so that each time that you're going into a more specified focus, um, you are going to have more one on one opportunity for your professors. Um, so in terms of the structure, we have lecture section and lab. Um, this applies to a lot of engineering classes as well as chemistry and other um, similar science classes. So lecture is what you think of typically as a large lecture hall um, with your professor, typically an hour to an hour and a half lecture. And then you also have section, which is actually with a graduate student instructor or GSI, and they um, review in section. So there's no new material taught by these GSIs, but they will take an hour at least a week to uh, meet with you and review. And that's a smaller class size of around 30 to 40 students. So you get that one-on-one -on -one help with the GSI. And then there is also a lab section. So for chemistry, that looks uh, very similar to a section with a GSI as your lab instructor, who will go over a little bit of a lab lecture at the beginning. And then you have your time to collaborate with your peers. Um, but in addition to these setups, um, there's also office hours, which you probably have heard of in a college atmosphere. Office hours are a really, really cool way to meet one on one with both your professors and your GSIs. So if you didn't have an opportunity to talk to professors in that 600 person uh, lecture hall, you can definitely go to their office hours. These are mandatory for all professors and GSIs to hold at least once a week. Um, so you can come and talk to them about maybe something you're struggling with or some research that you were really interested in what they were doing. Um, so this is a really amazing thing set up. And I have to tell you, in this virtual setting, they've continued in a really, really great way. I know for me, in a larger chemistry class that I'm in right now, they have GSIs who have office hours from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. You, they have their Zoom link set up and you just click away and I go for my problem sets and all different things. Um, and it's a really, really great way to get help really quickly and just kind of help in that process of learning. And then in terms of class size, that's obviously dependent on majors. So maybe in those e classes that are general classes in the beginning, you might find a large number of students, but as you go on, or you are in a more specific um, and smaller major that might look different. And then in terms of um, interaction, we have eye clickers uh, typically, which is like a poll or a like clicker that you use to answer questions in class. But now a lot of professors are transferring to using polls or the chat function or all certain things. People are getting as creative as possible to engage their students. And then also we have breakout rooms and things like that for you to meet other students and collaborate with them. In terms of resources, in addition to office hours, we have the Student Learning Center, which is an amazing way to get help in your underclassmen classes. So this looks like general chemistry classes, general um, anything classes really the student learning center is here for you with students who already took these classes usually from the same professors and now they're um, helping you with group studies or um, adjunct classes or just one-on-one -on -one help you can go directly to them they've transferred to virtual settings and i know i've used them for different midterm reviews and things um, and then there's engineering student services that are specific to engineering students as well as that four year academic advisor, which I mentioned, which is a really, really cool part of the College of Engineering because you're entering and applying directly, whereas in the College of Letters and Science, you might be waiting a little bit until you have a major and an advisor to go with it. You have that academic advisor there for you all four years. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind and something to access in your time here at Berkeley. And now um, transferring a little bit into student lives in terms of clubs and competitions and what that looks like for an average engineering student here at Berkeley. Um, so we have our Cal Soul team, our Cal Steel Bridge team, which 
builds steel bridges as um, the name implies. And this is really cool because we have different maker spaces and field stations. So we have our Richmond field station, which is just a 20 minute drive. And this Cal Steel Bridge team can actually use this um, field station as a workspace for them. And then we have our Berkeley Formula Racing team, our Biomedical Engineering Society, Society of Women Engineers, Cal Hacks, Pioneers in Engineering, and just a whole wide range of department honor societies. So you'll see it our right. Uh, there's a lot of competitions with other schools, which is really cool too. I know Cal leads in a lot of ways in this, but um, there's a lot of cross competition in terms of our uh, the canoe team or the, the concrete canoe team, which they make a canoe out of concrete, which is just insane to think about. Um, but this is a really cool environment for people to create, innovate um, in their undergraduate years and then compete against other undergraduate schools. Yeah, so now let me dive into a little bit more about the labs and maker spaces here at, on campus. So Saturja Dye Hall is home to Citrus, which is also known as the Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society. We just call it Citrus as that is quite a mouthful. So Citrus is basically a research center focused on creating IT solutions that generate both social and economic benefits for everyone and society as a whole. They work on health related project as well, projects as well as investing a lot of um, time and energy into robots and how they can help uh, people as well as looking at sustainable infrastructures. Next, we have Jacobs Hall. So Jacobs Hall is home to the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. Uh, this is UC Berkeley's hub for learning and make and making at the intersection of kind of looking at the intersection, sorry, of design and technology. It is a space designed to to mix students of different disciplines or different engineering fields and different expertise levels as well. So like you have freshmen there, you have seniors there and kind of provide them with a range of opportunities for hands on and kind of team-based learning. So they have, they offer courses there. I know that one of my roommates took a 3D printing course and a workshop um, in this hall and she was so cool. She would come home with like a little 3D printed, um, what's it called, 3D printed statues. It was really exciting. Uh, but you could also kind of do independent tinkering. It's up to you. This space is for engineers and for just students as uh, the student body as a whole. Next, we have Hesse Hall, which is home to our mechanical engineering uh, machine shop. So this space provides engineering students with a well-equipped, safe working environment in which they can design and manufacture products for engineering classes, research, um, or just on their own. Uh, the the mechanical engineering machine shop will also sponsor team competitions sometimes and you can also receive guidance from professionals and potentially also um, kind of follow some courses. Next we in Davis Hall we have the civil engineering construction bay. So some cool things about happening in this space um, include the fact that some of the pieces from the Golden Gate Bridge were actually stress tested here and that the Cal Steel Bridge team also uses the space for numerous different projects. Um, it's just an awesome building to be in, in my opinion. And finally, we have the Richmond Field Station, which is 170 acres of um, land owned by the University of California located in Richmond, which is about five miles away from Central UC Berkeley campus, like an easy bus ride. Um, it is used primarily by the College of Engineering for academic teaching and research activities, but a lot of clubs will just come here. So for example, the Cal Soul team will tr uh, try out their cars here and also the Berkeley Formula Racing team uh, does things in the Richmond Field Station. Okay, so moving on to research here at Berkeley for the College of Engineering students, which I know is a huge part of our campus culture. A lot of students, uh, no matter what college they're in, do engage in research and that's because it's so accessible to our students. So in terms of the Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program, or URAP, this is a very common program for people um, to apply into. It's really, really focused on helping students who have never had a research opportunity before to start um, and engage with faculty who are having research on campus. So this is a portal that people come into and there's different departments that offer different things and post their projects to the portal. And then you can apply to up to three in a um, application cycle per semester. And then you see what you get and you um, engage with that. And so that's a really great way to start in your research opportunity here on campus. Um, but there's also Beehive, which is specifically tailored for College of Engineering students and their interest in research. So that's another portal um, that College of Engineering students have accessible to them. And then we also have the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, which is this beautiful, beautiful laboratory up on the Berkeley Hills um, 
probably you would see it. This is the view from the Berkeley, um, the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And this is an amazing lab that houses a lot of research in the College of Engineering and other um, colleges. And so this is definitely accessible for undergraduate students to get involved in. If you have a professor that you know they're doing research that you're interested in, definitely highly encourage you to um, go to their office hours or send them an email. That is a huge way in addition to all these helpful tools that Berkeley offers, but also just our, our faculty are doing amazing things and they want your help. Um, they want undergraduate students in their labs. So that's a really great way. We also have the Sudarcha Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. So this is a really cool center that again, um, focuses on that cross between engineering and entrepreneurship. So we have the Collider Cup, which is kind of just a um, competition of sorts of pitching your ideas and then um, winning in terms of whatever innovation or uh, in terms of entrepreneurship and innovation that you came up with. And then we also have that undergraduate and professional programs and research through that. Um, so there's definitely people working hand in hand, um, professional faculty who are working on their research and want undergraduate help. And then you can see to our left, I don't know if we've um, formally introduced you to Oski, but there he is in the lab um, with his thumbs up. Yes, I love Oski so much. He is such a wholesome uh, mascot. So now let me finish it off with some legacy of the College of Engineering and some not notable figures and alumni. So the first one I'd like to mention is Rube Goldberg. Uh, she was a, uh, he was an engineer, sorry, at Berkeley. And he he would make some of these crazy complex machines that perform really simple tasks. So for example, he made this machine, this super, super intricate machine that like, it was really cool. Uh, but at the end of the day, the only thing it did is that it would pour coffee into a mug. Um, he's also a cartoonist. So actually he drew out a lot of his machines into really cute cartoons that you can find online. It was also published in a few newspapers. Then we have Dean Liu. She is an instructor, researcher, administrator, and was the very first female Dean of the College of Engineering. Uh, she has been awarded so many different things for all of her hard work in electrical and electronics engineering and is internationally recognized for her innovations in semiconductor devices and technology. She is honestly a super cool woman. Um, and then we have Shafi Goldwasser. She won the Turing Prize for Computer Science, which is basically the Nobel Prize for Computer Science. Um, she has made super fundamental contributions to cryptography, computational complexity, uh, computational number theory, and probabil probabilistic algorithms. And lastly, Steve Wozniak, uh, the co-founder of Apple. Many people will probably know him. He was a UC Berkeley alum of the College of Engineering. Um, and finally, we are celebrating 150 years of women in engineering um, this year. So I would highly recommend to go check out our website, 150w.berkeley.edu to read the stories of some remarkable women who attended our institution and the College of Engineering as well. Thank you so much for that wonderful tour, you two. That was fantastic. We are gonna go ahead and move now into our live question and answer session. So again, if you have any questions at all, please, please, please put them in the chat below and we will be happy to answer them now for you live. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our first question. I'll give that to Abby. Somebody asked, what sort of things are there to do outside of Berkeley's campus? I think this is a great question. So the city of Berkeley is a pretty cool place. And what are some of the things that, you know, you do to have fun off of campus, Abby? Yeah, I love this question also just because I know the College of Engineering tour is quite focused on academics, which is really important. And there's a lot to cover in terms of 11 majors, um, but there's also an amazing, amazing, um, life outside of academics here at Berkeley. And I'd like to just kind of touch on that um, because there's so much to do in the city of Berkeley, but also, as I mentioned, you're settled in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, but also the city right across the Bay. Um, so I think there are so many things to do. The biggest thing that surprised me, I guess, like coming to Berkeley, I'd heard about the urban life. I'd heard about Telegraph. There's amazing food. Um, there's very few chains you'll find in Berkeley, which is really, really cool. Um, I've been working my way steadily, slowly through my list of restaurants. Um, we'll see how I fare in the last um, two years here at Berkeley, but 
that's been amazing. Um, but I think the nature is the part that kind of um, gets overshadowed the most and is an amazing, amazing part of Berkeley in terms of the Berkeley Hills, but hiking and campus having like Strawberry Creek running through and just sitting out and reading a book um, in your downtime as a Berkeley student. Um, but that's been amazing is I've taken up running because the Berkeley residential area is really beautiful. So just uh, keep in mind that there are multiple facets to this amazing city. So you have the city across if you want like the real city life. Um, I think I dropped out for a second, but I think I'm back. Um, but yeah, so that's been a really amazing thing is to explore the culture of Berkeley coming from Southern California and a very suburban city. Um, it has been a really nice opportunity to expand a little bit. Um, so definitely try new things. Um, there's a lot of good boba. I hear people enjoy that. So there's a lot of good everything here um, in addition to the amazing academics. Yeah, absolutely. I I totally agree. And Berkeley is just like a really cute town in general. It's got a like a lot of old craftsman houses up in the hills. Everything has these, you know, beautiful views. So I, I have also started running during quarantine. I don't particularly like running, but I, I'd say it's like a nice, really nice residential area to run around in. And the food and nature are both absolutely amazing. I am biased because I grew up here, but I think they're pretty great. So we have some more questions for you too. Uh, Somebody is asking, what are some of the popular engine, like what, what kind of like extracurriculars do engineers do in particular? Uh, so you guys might have touched on this during the tour, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on it and sort of how people in general tend to balance their extracurriculars and their social life and all of the other things they have to do for school on campus. Do you want to answer this one, Nita? Yeah, of course. Um, so I... I wouldn't say that there's like a typical extracurricular activity that all engineers do. I think that that's what's the beauty of Berkeley is that you can do whatever you want, no matter what your major is. Uh, for example, like I'm an economics major, but in my consulting group, there's so many engineering majors and I get to learn so much from them. They're actually the ones who have inspired me to potentially take up IEOR because they just talk about it all the time. And they're like, you know, you should do it. It's so fun. It's so cool. So I think that's what's like kind of amazing about it is that even though you are in the College of Engineering, you can definitely take part in other clubs that have nothing to do with your major. So for example, like I'm also part of the Belgian club on campus has nothing to do with economics or statistics, but it's just like a really fun thing to do. Um, they just have coffee on Fridays at four and you just chat on Zoom. I, if we're a person, we'd be at like one of the local coffee shops. Um, so it's just like, I think that there's not one popular engineering extracurricular and you should just do whatever you you want to. Um, it is your time. You get to spend it however you want. And especially in, at, once you get to university, I think you have more control over your schedule and you get to kind of decide what you want to do and at what time. So usually like I tend to have my classes all in the morning so that in the afternoon I can focus on all of my extracurriculars, hang out with my friends. And so I think that how you, it's up to you how you wanna balance, um, but there definitely is an opportunity to do so many things here. Um, you just kind of have to plan it. I know that I have like a four year plan ready. I look at that like almost every day. Um, it's just trying to do as many of the things that I wanna be doing here. Yeah, that's a super great point. It does require, or it can require a lot of sort of planning in advance and sort of figuring out like what kind of schedule works best for you. And that can be hard at first. Um, but I think that you learn that when you're at Berkeley and uh, in general, Berkeley is very supportive of its students in, you know, academics and also in everything beyond. So that kind of brings us to the next question that's in here, which asks, uh, how does Berkeley support uh, people graduating? So like, in turn, maybe do we have a career center? Um, are there resources for internships or jobs on campus? Yeah, can one of you guys tell me a little bit more about uh, campus and jobs? I can I start like a little bit and then I'm sure Nina has her own experience that she can add on. Um, but I know in terms of preparing you for the future and jobs, which is crazy to think about as I feel like I just came. 
Um, but there are amazing um, resources. And I know myself as a pre-med student, I have looked into that um, and I have plans for the future. So the Career Center has been amazing and we do have one um, that is really great in terms of all sorts of different um, interests of yours. So we have advisors for every single thing that you can imagine. And they have a lot of resources to get you in contact with other people. Um, and I think that's the great thing about a lot, of, a lot of advising is if they don't know anything, they know 20 people who will know the thing that you need to know. So um, we have so many resources and so many different departments that it can be just you're constantly meeting with advisors and finding out new things, which is really cool. Um, and then as we probably mentioned before, we have Handshake, which is a really cool opportunity for UC Berkeley students. So you have your LinkedIn, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, a great social networking site, but there's also Handshake um, geared towards UC Berkeley students or just undergraduate students in general. And this is a very similar portal. Um, you can upload your whole resume and everything and then find internships in the Bay Area for people who are looking for undergraduate students in particular. So this is for internships and also research. And I've definitely utilized that as well because it's a really easy portal and it's all through the Career Center. So they know exactly what you're doing and they have a lot of workshops. There's also career fairs and everything, but I don't want to take, there's so many things. So I'm sure Nina can elaborate if she has more, um, but yeah. Yeah, um, a little bit like jumping off of Handshake. I remember when I was a freshman, I was very skeptical about Handshake for some reason. I was like, this doesn't feel legit. Like this is, I don't know. I just didn't believe it. But actually, fun fact, it does really work. Um, I've gone two internships so far out of Handshake. Um, there is like, personally, I did also apply to like 50 positions, um, but <laughs> I think that honestly, Handshake is such an amazing tool because a lot of the employers on Handshake are looking specifically for Berkeley students. So a lot of those positions have been posted solely for Berkeley students. And so I guess there's less competition because they're already kind of honing in on like, this is like, this is the group of students that we really want. Um, and also a lot of the career center people can help you with like looking over your resume, looking over a cover letter and kind of also guiding you. You can also apply a lot of filters on Handshake, which I personally really like. Um, so definitely recommend Handshake. I also really recommend reaching out to the uh, alumni office uh, because a lot of alumni actually really want to hire Berkeley students. You know, they were here on our campus. They know all the hard work we, we do. And so I think that uh, the alumni, they usually have like a lot of career fairs hosted by the Alumni Association. And I would highly recommend reaching out to them because they're also a great way to gain internships and kind of also get accustomed to the industry. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Those are both super salient points. You will have me back on Handshake in no time at all, uh, looking for a job after I graduate. Um, so to kind of just to conclude today's tour, I would love to know why you guys ended up choosing to come to Berkeley and uh, yeah, how, how you made that decision, how you feel about it, um, kind of your just your Berkeley story. Do you want to go first, Abby? Yeah, I can start off with my Berkeley story. Um, it definitely was interesting. And this is why I kind of plugged the nature and the different things that you didn't know, because I feel like Berkeley was a place where I really didn't know a lot. And all I knew were that I was very urban and that there was like a lot of political activism. And I was really intimidated by a lot of that. So I guess growing up, my family never thought I was going to be at Berkeley. I never saw myself there um here and it was just a very foreign idea I, I didn't really even consider it it was like a ch box I checked on the application and then I came and visited because why not um, I got in I should see it and I really realized that it checked all the boxes that I had in terms of a college there are so many things that um it had that I just like totally overlooked and I think that's the biggest thing about when you're coming through the college application process is to look at it um hopefully trying to be unbiased I know that's hard um but once I came that was like a really eye-opening moment um it was definitely a big turning point and it's really funny that I never thought I'd be here at all um but coming was a huge um, turning point. And so I think from now on, I've really learned a lot of things I never would have learned at a different school. Um, in the same way that I thought these things weren't the things I wanted. I came from a suburbs and everything. It was scary to think about uh, moving here. I think so many of the things that I kind of overlooked were the things that I like the most about this campus now and that I've 
opened my eyes to. I was able to take a wealth and poverty class with Robert Reich. And like, now I see his Instagram, like I have the notifications and I love him. And there's just so many things that I don't think I'd ever have if I was at any other school. Um, so the biggest thing, I guess I've heard other campus ambassadors say is it's not about who you are when you apply to school, but who you wanna be after your four years. And I don't think I would be the same person if I didn't come to Berkeley. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Abby. That's a super sweet story. How about you, Nina? Yeah, so back in high school, I was the most indecisive person you'll ever meet. Uh, so for me, deciding on where to go to college just seemed like an impossible decision. Um, but my counselor recommended that I do this kind of little trick. She said, for a day, pretend like you're going to, because I was between two choices in the end. And so she was like, for one day, pretend like you're going to Berkeley. And then for one day, pretend like you're going to the other school. And I was like, okay. I was a little bit skeptical. Like, I was like, what is that going to do? Like me pretending. Um, but so I did. And I went pretty ham. Um, I like spent the whole day when I was at Berkeley, like, stalking people's Instagram like I was going on clubs Instagrams I was like also like looking at the people who were tagged I was like okay what are these people like I even like stalked some of the like execs of those like groups on LinkedIn like they probably were like what the frick is this like high school student doing looking at my LinkedIn profile but I went full on trying to really get myself like what would be the life of a Berkeley student? Um, Cause I was an international student. So I never had the opportunity to really come here. So I really tried, like I even went on Google maps and like did all of that fun stuff. But at the end of the two days, um, I realized that Berkeley was definitely the place that I wanted to be. I, in high school, I had so many interests. I wanted to do environmental sciences. I wanted to do economics. I kind of, I wanted to do graphic design. I wanted to do languages. And I saw myself being able to do all of those things one way or another at Berkeley, which is why I loved it here. Um, it's here that I've been doing a lot of my internships. Not only am I doing business and economics things, but I'm also getting the opportunity to do some graphic design for them. Um, it's also here that I've discovered that I potentially might like statistics, which is why I'm majoring, double majoring in it. And it's also here that I'm able to pick up German um, alongside my double major. And it's really fun. I'm in, like my second semester now. And um, it's just wonderful, all the opportunities that you have here. Berkeley has so many resources available to all of its students, but it's kind of up to you on how to use those resources. If there's one lesson I've learned here is that you have to be proactive. There's so many people out there willing to give you help, but you have to be the one to go out and ask for that help. And then so many people will be there to help you. So that is honestly why I picked Berkeley. That is so absolutely true. I, I cannot resonate more with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just share some resources with you guys, uh, letting you know how you can contact us in the future if they'll load for you. So I wanna go ahead and shout out our social media handles. You can follow us on Instagram at visit.berkeley. Oh, pardon me, that's our, you can follow, you see our website at visit.berkeley.edu or you can go ahead and find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those normal places. You can email us with any further questions you might have at tour.berkeley.edu and a student campus ambassador will get back to you ASAP, letting you know all the answers to your questions. If you wanna read more or learn more about student experiences on campus, I definitely recommend checking out our Bear Talk blog. I know I write blog posts to the blog. I think Nina and Abby might also sometimes, you know, just kind of like what's going on in our daily life, what's it like to be a student at Cal, all that good stuff to get more information on any of the other things going on on campus as far as engineering, you should visit our engineering website, engineering.berkeley.edu or our, uh, to hear more tours, visit.berkeley.edu. A whole bunch of useful information, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope this was informative. Feel free to go back and look to the tour if you need to hear it again, or again, like I said, just email us, let us know. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining us and shout out to Abby and Nina for the great tour.